I'm gonna apologize for a lot of things. This has all taught me a really valuable lesson. I have a lot to work on as a human. I don't know who that person was. I was the person that I didn't want to be. Like I said, I made a huge mistake. I don't expect to be forgiven. Cancel culture. Unless you've been living under a rock since 2018, the chances are you've heard about this bizarre, almost chronically online phenomenon that's taking the careers away from countless talents. Practically everyone with a large audience in the last few years has either been cancelled, been scared of being cancelled, or tried to prove the cancel culture doesn't apply to them. Whether you're Mr. Beast, Kendrick Lamar, Charlie D'Amelio, Dave Chappelle, Jeffree Star, Andrew Tate, Keem Star, Alex Baldwin, or Donald Trump, yeah, the literal fucking president in the United States. You're fired. Get out of here. They've all been canceled. So I've been thinking a lot lately, and I'm trying to figure out where did this all come from and where did this all start? Because I'm only 17, and I can remember a time when I got away with a lot more shit that came out of my mouth. Now I feel like I'm walking on fucking eggshells in this like post-COVID era of sensitivity. Anyway, I was reading about the famous radio drama War of the Worlds. It's the 1938 Orson Welles play that allegedly caused mass panic amongst New Jersey residents. But one aspect of that story that I think is very overlooked is that Orson Welles had to give a formal apology the next day. So this got me thinking. Was Orson Welles the first person to ever be cancelled? No. The War of the Worlds fiasco brought instant notoriety to Welles, leading to a Hollywood contract in his first feature film. So, Orson Welles might not have been the first person to ever be cancelled, but it does bring up the question of where did cancel culture begin? And I think before we can answer that, we need to set some guidelines for what cancel culture actually means. Now, according to Google, cancel culture is, quote, the mass withdrawal of support from public figures or celebrities who have done things that aren't socially accepted today. And I think the key word in that definition is today, because there's certain things that were never socially acceptable, like murder. And, uh, well, that's the only thing I could think of that has never been socially accepted in human history. Even that's kind of debatable, so I guess we live in a sick world. But basically what I'm trying to get at is cancel culture is kind of like the police, used to enforce the new standards of what's acceptable. For instance, this is Joe Biden in 2008. Do you support gay marriage? No. Barack Obama nor I support redefining from a, from a civil side what constitutes marriage. Now for today's standards, that would be really fucking offensive. Now here's Jimmy Kimmel in the mid-90s. Night, call below, look up in sky and say, what the hell going on up there? And yes, that would definitely be canceled today. So on one end of the spectrum, we have people like Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, and R. Kelly who were canceled by the public before their sex crime trials. And on the other end, there's everyday people like David Shore, who faced criticism on Twitter after he tweeted a study from an academic journal questioning the political consequences of violent and peaceful protests. Now, the first time the term cancel culture was actually used was on Twitter in 2014. Some guy named Miles McNutt was a TV critic and assistant professor at the Old Dominion University. He used it to refer to the cancellation of a TV series. He tweeted this. That tweet only got like 10 likes, so I don't think that was the tweet that single-handedly started this whole fucking horrible social revolution, but that was the first time the word was used. So the trend of calling someone out had its roots in the early 2010s on Tumblr blogs. Notably on the blog, Your Fave is Problematic, where fandoms would discuss why their favorite stars were imperfect. But cancel culture came into the world around 2017, after the idea of canceling celebrities for problematic actions or statements became popular. It's almost impossible to pinpoint who the first celebrity who was canceled is, because cancel culture in itself is like a big fucking storm that's slowly getting bigger and having more real-world consequences as it moves along. But even more dramatic than being canceled is being deplatformed. In the United States, the banning of speakers on university campuses dates all the way back to the 40s. But I'm talking about online deplatforming. Beginning in 2015, Reddit banned several communities on the site for violating the site's anti-harassment policy. A 2017 study published in the journal Proceedings of the ACM on Human-Computer Interaction examining the casual effects of the ban on both participating users and affected communities found that the ban served a number of useful purposes for Reddit, and that users participating in the banned subreddits either left the site or dramatically reduced their hate speech usage. Now obviously they fucking dramatically reduced their hate speech usage. These people aren't insane. They're not doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result and they like reddit so they're gonna go back and try to you know tidy their shit up a little bit 
But anyway, this was the fucking beginning of the end because on May 2nd, 2019, Facebook and the Facebook-owned platform Instagram announced a ban of dangerous individuals and organizations, including the Nation of Islam's leader, which I don't, don't even get me started on that one. Alex Jones and his organization InfoWars, Paul Joseph Watson, Laura Loomer, and Paul Nellen. And then in the wake of the 2021 storming of the U.S. Capitol, Twitter also banned the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Twitter, an American company, banned the fucking leader of their own country. How fucking crazy is that? But anyway, as well as Trump, 70,000 other accounts linked to the events in the far-right movement that day were also banned. Now, I'd love to continue talking about cancel culture, but the truth is... The history is still in the making. This shit is still getting worse every single day. Just recently, Andrew Tate was kicked off all platforms. Fucking Kanye West was kicked off all platforms. Donald Trump is still kicked off all platforms. Give me a second. I'm going to go Google something. Okay, yeah, so I just looked up people who have been deplatformed off Twitter and Instagram, and they're all fucking Republicans. Anyway, that's the end of my video. And I don't want you to think this video is incomplete, because this video is supposed to be a, a metaphor for the actual political climate of cancel culture. It's still in the making.